Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time it is for you. I'm Cyclone. Welcome to more or less play Train Simulator Classic. Uh, so it is currently the 25th anniversary of the Class 66, and I decide this is as good a time as any to do a celebration of the Class 66, given that I am from Canada where it was produced, and if there's any European train I should be celebrating as a result, this is probably the one. Uh, because It even has a Canadian livery that uh, travels on the rails, and I have to find... Uh, figure out which one does that and try and drive that one at some point because that would be uh, the uh, penultimate coming home experience for me in terms of this train because I used to live in the place where it was constructed. So, uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> A little bit of information about me, ironically, that you probably didn't need. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and do the Class 66 run on suburban Glasgow Northwest today. Now, you can know, see that I've actually brought up the route to Airdrie with this scenario. This scenario was originally produced for the original Suburban Glasgow. It was made by Green Dragon 32. I originally taped this scenario uh, hoping to show the uh, scenario on that route, but I decided for whatever reason at the time not to publish it. And then that's when my computer went belly up last year. So uh, I lost that feed. I don't have that video anymore. I don't have some other videos like some West Coast Mainline North videos, which I still have to introduce that route as well. So that's why I've been behind on that one. Uh, so I have, stuff that was lost that's already been played and you're going to be seeing a few check marks here and there this is one of those cases uh, i had this and another scenario by green dragon 32 played on this route both using the class 66 i've only installed this one for now uh this is a listed as a 59 minute drive starting at belgrove junction going up to craig and Doran, which means we're doing pretty much the whole route except for the Helensburg area because this train is uh, supposedly going up on the west highland line south heading north and i don't have any scenarios for the west highland line south uh, using the 66. This is the best I could do if I wanted to do something I've already played. Mind you, I haven't played that route either, but we won't talk about that. Um, so, yeah, we're going to go ahead and do this Class 66 EWS scenario uh, running after the signal check at Belgrove Junction at Glasgow City Centre. We will be driving at empty OTA wagons over the northwestern Glasgow Suburban Lines, and we're going to be getting, like, it, like I said earlier, up to the West Highland Line. So we're going to have to watch signals along the way. We're following a stopping pasture service, which means it's not going to be clean sailing. We're going to have to uh, stay behind that pasture service. I don't believe it's timetable, though, so I think we can still enjoy this drive without any uh, complications. Let's get started. Good afternoon, driver. You are at Belgrove Junction in charge of a train of empty log wagons, which you will be driving as far as the junction with the West Highland Line. Get underway when your signal clears. So we should know that we are driving the AP version of the train. You're going to be able to see that in a second here when I hit the uh, reverser to put it in. So that's proof right here that we have the AP version of the train. You can hear the EWS alarm. And while we wait for the signal, let's go ahead and just check behind the train for a second. And uh, you're going to notice that I have the line heading off in that direction towards Airdrie active. The way, it play, the way this train was placed... The original uh, setup of the train, I'll just reset my view here. The original setup of the train and the scenario actually did not have this line here. I wanted to include it for the sake of uh, having completion. Here it is. So I wanted to include it for the sake of completion. In fact, you can remember the line goes all the way back to Livingston, just it's not scenery past Airdrie. So here's where we are. The line actually ended literally right here at the end of the train. We were placed right at the start of the route. So it was meant to be a full route run from the Belgrove Junction area. That was the idea. Uh, so as you can see, I've gone ahead and set it so that we are going to have the full route and therefore we have any scenery changes that might have taken place, which I don't think there are any, but in the event any scenery changes have taken place, uh, such as way back here, you can see some more scenery back here, for example. That wall was not there before, for example. Uh, the area behind was not there before. So any scenery changes, if anything, uh, are updated into this version of the route. We're going to go ahead and see the full route as it is right now. And this is the first time I've run this scenario on this route, so I have no uh, commentary as to how good the uh, scenario will run or whether there'll be a bug on it. Uh, if so, I may have to clone it back to the original route and uh, go from there. In any case, we should... Oh, we can take the brakes off. I have to remember there's a regular brake to take off here. We do have a yellow signal. So it is a single yellow, just to confirm. There it is. Single yellow signal. We are clear to go at this point towards... Uh, Belgrove platform. At this time we are not cleared past Belgrove platform, so I'm going to keep the train slow. Just to verify that we don't have a timetable, there it is. 
We can just drive casually. I will drive realistically, uh, but I'm not going to tank it slow just so I can get green signals all the way. There's no reason to do that. I'm going to drive it realistically. I think driving at a slow speed in a freight train is realistic. So we're going to do that. When you have a yellow signal, it's a lot harder to bring a train to a stop when you have a lot of cars. This is not bad, but uh, trust me, they get worse. Here's a train coming at us. Let's take a look who that is. That is in service for, uh, I guess, for, heading for Edinburgh Waverley. It must have started at Belgrove from the way that train was labeled. So that's uh, how trains are labeled in this scenario. I'm not going to bring up all of them. I just wanted to show you that the uh, scenario author did indeed name the trains. That is a red signal. So brakes are coming on. We've been alerted to that red signal. Now I think this train is going to do some jerking if you don't bring it to a full stop. So if I do this, for example, and release it, I think the car has tried to, uh, there you go. You get a bounce up for, and I'm suddenly going six miles when I was going four. So you have to be very, very careful handling the train in this scenario. I don't know if it counts as, um, have uh, as uh, erratic movement on the uh, vehicles or on the train, but nonetheless, it is uh, something you want to be careful of all the same. So I'm going to bring the train to a full stop now that I'm near the red signal. I can now let it go. Brakes are going to come completely off. I'll put a small amount of speed on to pull up to the signal. Now this is normally sufficient for being able to see the signal, so you could literally leave it right here if you want to. But I prefer to keep moving if I can. In fact, it's a good thing I did that because we have a yellow signal. So let's keep going. It is, however, only a yellow signal. So again, I'm going to take the speed slow. I know going 15 was too fast. So I'm just going to keep it... Uh... Wow, that really gained some speed, didn't it? Ooh, I did not think it was gaining that much speed. Okay, putting the throttle into 100% certainly gained me a lot of power there. Oh, I might be able to turn my instrument lights. I should turn my headlights on too, by the way. You can see that I have headlight settings up here. You can see that it shows the exact layout of the headlights in the top right corner as well. Instrument lights don't do anything. By the way, one more thing I should point out if I can get a view. There's a computer up there. We can actually turn that on. I think you do it like that. There you go. You can turn the computer on. And I'm not going to spend time up there, uh, but you can look around the menus and see what kind of um, information you can get in some of the panels on this uh, train that you're driving. There's a line off towards the area south of Glasgow Central to Shields Junction. The stations on, the li on that line are generally closed now. They don't exist anymore. Passenger services don't really run down there. It's more of an empty stock movement type of thing now. Since I've got a lot of speed going right now, let's bring this down a little bit. Because I don't know if my next signal is clear or not. And I'd rather not have an emergency stop applied to my train. More brakes, please. I, well, I have a yellow, so I'm actually going to let the train uh, lunge forward on me here because I am clear to go. There's the lunge. I'm just going to leave it where it is. The next signal is... Ver oh, we have a green. Okay, but the next signal will still be yellow, so I'm still going to take my time for a moment. So that was the High Street Station. We're going to go through Glasgow Queen Street uh, High Level as our next... Actually, that actually might be Low Level. High Level is the one above ground. But it's still through a tunnel, even that one. So you know it's at least a yellow signal, but I'm going to wait and see if I have... No, I don't. It's a yellow signal. It's a double yellow signal, but it is a yellow signal. I 
I am gaining some speed in this tunnel, even though I'm not applying any throttle. So we're going to leave things as it is. This uh, 1 in 127 gradient is uh, having an effect on me, apparently. Now we should get some clearance with the train in front for a little while because there is a long path uh, between Glasgow Queen and there actually might be one more station. I think Charing Cross comes after it. But after Charing Cross, we're going to have a long gap to our next station, which is uh, Partick. We now have a single yellow aspect. It has not cleared, which tells me the other train is still at Partick. We're going to bring our speed down a little bit to be very careful. I'll have to accept a lunge here because I want to drive slowly. So I'll have to take that little lunge, unfortunately. There's the lunge. When I'm not in a tunnel, I'll see if I can demonstrate for you what is causing that lunge. But you have to operate this kind of train knowing that that could happen because the cars are not fused together like on some passenger trains. They are all individual cars and when you slow down the train engine itself, all the cars behind you have to do something. So eventually the cars in front of you will start responding to you slowing down, but the ones in the back are still going ramming into you. So the whole set of cars is going to ram into you and that's what causes the lunge. But once they run into you, they do have that little bit of friction that they have themselves that slows them down at the same time to then follow behind you appropriately. The question is how this game handles that. Does it actually end up handling the uh, train in such a way that... I'm putting some speed on, by the way, because I have a double yellow. Does it actually handle them in such a way that every time you hit the brakes, you let go, you lunge forward. You hit the brakes, you let go, you lunge forward. You could actually gain speed possibly by doing that. So the question is how the game handles that. I'm not sure if it's done perfectly. But um, it does try to simulate that lunge when you're slowing down. If you don't come to a full stop, therefore preventing the cars banging in you from doing anything to you, uh, you're basically going to get lunged forward. You could be going two and you're going to be bumped up to four or five, probably. I am still gaining speed. It is kind of strange that I'm gaining... Oh, no, never mind. I take that back. I have the speed applied. I have a 25% throttle. I forgot that I did that. I was going to say I'm on level ground, so it doesn't make sense. But no, I've got the throttle applied. So uh, I'm a dum-dum. We have a green signal. I'm going to go ahead and increase the speed now a little bit more. Because we are clear to proceed to our next, uh, well, signal. But we're going to take the throttle off before we get too high because I now know that the throttle will keep going for a bit into uh, whatever it wants to. So I'm at 32. I'll take it off now and see what happens. For seeing the 35, I'm going to put a little bit back on because I can add a little more. Again, we're now following that passenger train to Partick, but Partick is still far away. So we're not going to have any issues with uh, that train as long as it does what it needs to. We are getting a yellow now, so that's got to be a double yellow signal. So two signals away is probably the one protecting Partick. That means up ahead is a single yellow. We're going to get slowed down again at this point because... Uh, Heinlein Station is fairly close, and I'm not sure if we're taking a different line after the uh, junction uh, that goes to Annie's Grove, but um, I don't remember offhand. Either way, we have to uh, make sure we don't run into this train before we at least get through Heinlein. Is that a single yellow? That's a, okay. Gross. That's gross. 
Here's a line from uh, the South, from Exhibition Center. And there is the highway, or the motor, motorway, or the motor route, whatever you want to call it. We're close enough to the signal. I'll take the lunge at this point. There it is. See, so yeah, again, imagine you got 12 cars. The front one hits you, then the second one hits you, then the third one hits you, and eventually they all hit you and you lunge forward. If you only had two or three cars, it probably wouldn't be affecting as bad. So peering ahead, we do have a yellow signal. I will take the lunge. There it is. See, so yeah, I'm demonstrating uh, how that lunge works. You have to be very careful uh, when trying to slow down for a speed limit that you don't lunge past that speed limit with the cars hitting you. So you want to give yourself a little bit of space or just keep the brake applied for a little while if need be. So Partick is now accessible. It's a yellow signal at Partick. Single yellow. That may be upgraded by the time we get there because there are at least two more signal blocks heading to uh, Hindland. So we're going to keep our speed under 30, and we're going to see if that is enough. Nice water here on this route. Yep, we have a yellow. That definitely looks like a double yellow from a distance, so I believe that is the case. I'm not going to worry about adjusting my speed in any way at this time. I'm going to leave it alone. What is this signal? Is this a single? Uh oh. Oh no. No, 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 no. Don't do this. Don't do this now, please. You see a train coming. Let's look at this one. This is a uh, Jordan Hill service here. That's the uh, station in the air, in the junction south of Annie'sland. So you can go to Jordan Hill or you can go to Annie'sland as possible locations here. This should be yellow. The train should let me know. Yeah, the train. That is a yellow signal. We are good to go. We are currently being routed via Jordan Hill. I don't know, again, whether we're going via Singer or via Jordan Hill, but one way or the other, we're going to be um, finding out in a moment here. So here is Heinland, known very, very uh, well for a cat that used to be on the, uh, used to come to the station all the time. I think it was, I think his name was Hermes or something like that. But either way, he was known as the Heinland cat. Kind of like Huddersfield with the two cats that live there now, or the one or two cats. And a uh, fun little fact, the Huddersfield route did not have them featured in the route at the time that I played the route on this channel. If you do a quick drive, you will now find the, the uh, kitties, kitty or kitties, at that station on a quick drive. And you can also, oh, this, the, did you notice that? The signal just updated, the... Um, Repeater actually changed in our presence. So we are now under a yellow signal coming up. We know this now. So yeah, you can probably put those casts in any scenario you make for the route as well, but they only appear, I believe, on the quick drive and on one scenario. Uh, if I happen to get to see a scenario with them out, I will try to show them on the Huddersfield line in the future. If I know they're going to be there. If I don't know, it's going to be a surprise.
So the fact that the route still says Jordan Hill tells me we are going via Jordan Hill. Why we are still following a passenger train instead of getting immediate service is interesting. But that's what we've been given. We're not going to Annie's Land. So Annie's Lind is up in that direction. Behind the trees. There we go. That's where Annie's Lind is. We're not going to check that out today. I'm still going slow because I know there could be a red signal up ahead. It is a yellow signal. So I think there's more distance between stations now. That means we should eventually start getting green signals. I'm taking a risk at going up to 20 miles per hour at this time and going a little in excess of that. So it is risky. It's also a 50 mile per hour line, which means that uh, once these trains make their stops, uh, or this train makes its stops, it should be um, quicker for it to get out of our way as well. Of course, at this point, I secretly wish I was not waiting for that passenger train. I just got routed around so I could go in front because the stopping at every station is going to slow me down. Yeah, I, like I get the passenger trains are the priority, but at the same time, you're holding up a train with another train stopping in front of you every 500 feet. <laughs> it kind of holds up the other... Like, yeah, it's the train that should be held up, but uh, nonetheless, it can be annoying as a freight train driver. On a high speed line, it makes sense because they're going to be going faster than you. But if these trains are going the same speed as you are, they're stopping. You're not. Why can't you just go 60 and get out of the way? It would make sense, right? have a yellow signal again once again I'm gonna increase my speed taking a chance here we're actually on a downhill never mind we're on a downhill I'm just gonna let that do the job 1 in 79 this is a single yellow so this is actually a bit of a risk uh, because the next station the train is currently stopped so we're going to go through Scott's town Scott's town hill uh, there's a train at Garscadden that we're following Because I am going fast enough, I'm going to peer ahead and look at this red signal in the eye. Put on a heavy, heavy break. Because we're going to need it. Oh yeah, we are definitely going to need that heavy, heavy break. I think we're going to get emergency break here. I'm not going slow enough. It just cleared. Okay, time for another lunge, guys. Gonna actually leave a little bit of uh, break on there just to control it. Okay, now we're gonna go. Yeah, I tried. I tried playing with it, tried to prevent it, but I guess it happens automatically. It just happens automatically. What is a yellow signal? So Garskaden is now open. I believe Dalmuir is the uh, following station. That is the main station uh, for where both lines merge. So the line from um, on the north side also goes that way. I've suddenly forgotten what stations are on the north line. Complete mind blank. One is for a factory up there. It's no longer there.
I can see we have a yellow Agar Skadden, so I don't mind putting a little more power on right now. I now know 30 is too fast for when you're following a train in the stopping service. Now a double yellow. There's no station in this block. That's one reason we got upgrade to a double yellow so quickly. The train was able to clear two blocks quicker. This might be another good chance to take a look at the chariot that we're driving today. This is our train for the day. EWS 66074 is what we are driving. And here's this view in the sun. Nice gleam of the sun along the cab. And, uh, oh, there's me. Hello. How are you? Nice to see you, everybody. And uh, we're going by the Yoker Yard right now. That means the next station is obviously going to be Yoker. I didn't see that sign back there. What did that sign say? There's a sign back there I want to take a look at. I'm going to get ready to hit Q because I actually do have to uh, respond to an alert up here. It's probably going to be a yellow. Oh. There you go. Did you notice that I just got warned about the AWS as well? I got an AWS warning there on the um, text. So when you're outside the train, the text will pop up to tell you on the uh, AP version of the train that you have an AWS alert. The DTG version of the train, or RSC it was, it was at the time, does not tell you this. That's a really nice feature that I wish more trains had by default. Because you're out there getting a picture, you go to snap a picture, and you're trying to line up another shot, all of a sudden, zzz, emergency breakdown to zero. It's like, well, tell me something, you dummy. There's another train going by. That's another Class 320. Uh, the trains on this route generally are shown as Class 320s. There are 334s, and I think 318s on this route as well. But I'm pretty sure the stock, I, I don't know the details, but I'm pretty sure the stock here is probably going to be getting upgraded as well at some point because the um, 321s, I think, are going out. They're trying to pull some of the 321s out of service, I believe. I know the 314s are long gone because uh, they got retired years ago. Uh, the 318s, I want to say they're going as well. I think there's some kind of electric train now running the trains from Glasgow Central. Uh, so I could be mistaken on that. So I'm not sure what the upgrade plans are for stock on this route, but it will be very interesting to, uh, it could be very interesting for train spars at least to know that, uh, because hey, they're the ones that follow all the trains and see what goes through. So some of them might be interested in what runs on this network uh, in the future, heading to the uh, Malay area way up in the north where the line ends. I'm gonna bring my speed back up a little bit here. Ah, Clyde Bank Station is the next station. Dalmuir follows that station. I'm 100% on that one now. Because there was a line that used to cut off uh, heading to Dalmuir Riverside. That line is now a stub, and I don't know whether it's still there today. If it is, it's not used, probably. If, if anything, more like a yard movement, if anything, a shunt movement once in a while. But typically not used. It might be used in a situation where there's a snowstorm and the line is closed. Maybe the train from uh, Dalmuir can be brought up to uh, that area and just stored there for the night. I don't know, but uh, one way or the other, it's not a line that is used nowadays because the line beyond a certain section has been lifted. I'm going to risk going up to 30 now.
We know it's a single yellow at Clyde Bank. All right, we have an uphill. One in 98 uphill grading is going to affect our climb at this point in speed. In fact, 25% is doing nothing. I think I noticed there was a lot of uh, clay on our train as well, if I saw that correctly. So because we're coming up on Dom here, we might actually get stopped here for a moment while the other train shuts out of our way. But right now we are getting a double yellow, so we are good for the time being. Forty is our speed limit up ahead, so I'm going to go ahead and maintain a slower speed for right now. Especially because we're on a downhill. There is a line to a Dalmere Riverside that is now lifted beyond a certain section here. And if you look at the um, map today, there's no evidence of where that line used to go. And I think it's mostly filled in now. Without the things. Here's a quick peek at the map to show you the line goes up to uh, that point over there. So as we make a right turn, we're going to be seeing the end of the line over there. In fact, I'll pop out the train for just a second and show you. Right over, is it here? I don't see it now. Okay, I don't know where it went. <laughs> I'm not worried about it. Probably covered by grass. Since this could be a red... Actually, no, we had a double yellow. We're fine. What am I doing? We had a double yellow. I can't see around the corner, but I'm pretty sure it was a double yellow we had before. There it is. Single yellow. So Damir is open. The line th uh, beyond Damir is not. So I do have to slow down anyway. The uphill has really helped me slow down. That's the good news here. So the lurch forward will not do much because those cars are also being dragged backwards. I don't want to lose all my speed, so I need to put some speed back on here. I'm going to put a 75% thrall to make sure I can keep going here. And ease that back off. Actually put it down to zero for a moment. Gonna try to uh, nurse this so I can maintain enough speed to move safely while eventually pulling into a, for a possible stop. That's a heck of a decrease, so let's keep it at 50% throttle for a moment. There's a crossover onto the other track there. Okay, now I have to take it off because I do not know what's coming up up ahead. It is a... Is that, oh, that, is that a green for us? That's a green for us. Okay, we're good. So the train just had to get out of our way. We have a green. There it is. All official confirmed. We can go up to line speed. 40 miles per hour is now our target. So he's going to wait for us, and then typically he would pull back into Dalmuir for a different platform for another service. I think he must have pulled in the siding here. No, he didn't. He actually took off. I don't know where he went, but he took off. Wherever he is, he's gone. Map check would confirm here. Um, there he is. He's way up there. That's where he is. That's who we're following. He's still. We're still following him. 60 is now our speed limit, so we can actually gain a lot of speed now. But because we're still following this train, we don't want to necessarily go uh, all the way to 60, because we will have to hit the brakes and take a heck of a lunge forward. In fact, there's our double yellow, so I'm going to ease it back right now. That's enough. No more. Oh, it's a single yellow. Oh my, the signals work differently in here. I can't forget that. This is actually a red signal up ahead.
I thought that train was too close. I was getting just a little too com comfortable here. Oh, we still got a lunge there, that's for sure. Now, I don't know what my next signal is going to say, so I have to slam on the brakes here. I got down to 10. I'm going to take the lunge here. See, we have a red signal. I can still hit the brakes if I need to. And just like that, we have a green. But knowing how the signals work, notice that went from red to green. So we know that there could be a single yellow aspect suddenly show up within the section uh, ahead. And we know right now there would be a single yellow aspect the way these signals in this area work. So you get that warning for a single yellow with all of a sudden. And um, you're slowing back down. So knowing that this could happen, I'm going to ease off on my speed a little bit until I see whether that's a green signal or not. At that point, I can uh, go ahead and increase the throttle even more, but I don't think I'm going to get away with that. Because when you get up to Dumbarton, it's going to be slow going for a while. You ever wonder why those uh, Class 66 uh, cab ride videos you see online are a lot longer than uh, these ones? That's why. Than the passenger ones, I mean. That's why. They seem more boring because you're sitting in the cab going a lot slower. You don't have the activity of a station stop to pay attention to. Again, it's a shame we couldn't get around this train somehow because we were uh, following right behind. I mean, you couldn't delay that train by one minute to let us through. Seriously? Here's our yellow signal. Notice there's no signal on the HUD to show you this. This is just an advanced notice of another signal ahead being uh, red. This one is also far away from that signal. There's another class 66, by the way. So this signal is also far away from that signal. Uh, we know the area up to the station ahead, which is uh, bowling, is uh, free. But the station beyond the area beyond bowling to Dumbarton, as I said, is currently very busy. I think we're gonna have to get down to 30 for that area anyway, so it might be a good idea to slow it down right now again. In fact, I will slow it down right now. Just a little bit. Now that train might be finishing at Dumbarton. I actually want to check this now. That train might be finishing its service at Dumbarton. Where is it going? It is, nope. It is currently all the way up here. Uh, it is going, who knows? I don't know where it's going. It's apparently a class 156. So I suspect the 320 might have been used to represent all the 156s on this route. I don't know. Just to, just to provide inclusiveness so more people can play this scenario. Okay, brakes are off. I'll take a lunge. Thank you very much.
Okay, there's a little dip to 55 up ahead. I knew that. Green. Again, it was going to be either be green or red. You don't get yellow here. I really hope the real life route, the update, these signals to include yellows. I really hope so. Because they are much, much uh, handier for um, train drivers rather than having to suddenly be greeted from a green right down to a yellow again, having to constantly increase speed and slow down. It'd be nicer for train drivers to know that, hey, the next signal is definitely not allowing you through right now. It'd be a lot better from a signaling perspective. But what do I know? So 55 is now our limit, who cares? We're not even near that. Now I've not seen any warning signals yet. So as you can see, I've had no pathing issues. The AI trains have not had any pathing issues so far. Uh, because the portal is still down at the Belgrove end, any trains heading towards the portal where we started will still be able to portal off perfectly fine. So any scenario that you can run on the original suburban Glasgow Northwest, bring it over to the Airdrie route. You can run it on the Airdrie route as well, and you can even update some of the trains to have uh, actions beyond if you want to simulate real, real traffic to air. Airdrie as part of the uh, scenario that you're playing. So you can always do that as well. Just update the AI traffic. I'm going to take an unprecedented risk for me. I'm going to bring my speed up to 40 again. Though I know there's a 30 up ahead, so I don't know why I'm doing that. Oh, the speed limit is 40 up ahead. Let's just stop it right here. That works. While we're waiting to see what happens, let's look at the computer a little bit. Ah, uh, down. Oh, up. There we go. Enter. Ah, program meter. Um, starting system. Digital. Power data. Check the signal. Green. Okay. Uh, moving over to here, we have that cooling system multiplayer multiplayer or multiplexer none of this works there is another page we can hit next page apparently uh, i don't remember how to hit next page but i believe that's where data is can i go uh exit oh that's exit so i might have been how next page was done no i don't remember uh self tests can't go into self tests you and information ah here's the inf the useful info you see the time on here all of a sudden so that can be very nice anyway let's pay attention to our train
Our speed's gone down to 30, which is fine. We're following a train, we know that. Uh, but it might have gone through all the Nabartan stations by now, so we might actually be clear at this point. Speed limit up ahead is 30 across the junction. So we're not going to try to exceed that for right now. We're just gonna have to bring it back down and we're gonna have to take a lunge, which can be dangerously putting us over the speed limit. This is Dumbarton East. Now I wonder if the uh, train we were following might have taken off on another branch line by now. Heading to Balak maybe? Where is it? That's a different train. Oh, look at that. He has gone towards Balak. The train we're following is gone. Our line is clear. We're good to go the rest of the way. All right. We get green signals now. We don't have to worry about that anymore. We do have to worry about the speed limits, though. So we have been told about the 30 now, and we are fortunately going 27.6. So uh, not an issue. I thought I saw a yellow signal up ahead. I think that's just some kind of a white sign or something or a building paint job. I wonder if uh, buildings near a railroad track are forbidden from using uh, green, yellow, and red. <laughs> that would be interesting. At least in the direction that trains would see. Although a train would be like, I see a red house! I'm stopping! Uh, no, dude. This is Dumbarton Central. We added one of our uh, suburban Glasgow services here. Right in the platform to the left, which is platform number three. That's where we stopped that service. That was, uh, I believe, my first thousand point scenario uh, in all the scenarios in this game that I had played to that point. Thirty is now our speed limit. And there's the line to uh Balak, where that other train took off to, we're not going to see him anymore, or be following him. We shouldn't have seen him anyway, because that would mean we did something wrong. Frankly, I kind of wish that service went to Milngavie, because if that service went to Milngavie, we would have had greens a lot sooner. So increasing speed because we do, do have an allowance up to 30. We are allowed to get up to 60 in a second here. And here it is. So you can finally just enjoy the drive for, I don't know, six miles. That's enough speed.
So we got a little bit of fast travel out of this train today. We are going to have to slow down now as we're coming up to Craig and Doran. This was our fast stretch. This was our chance to take a look at the... Oh, hello. Nice chance to look at the uh, riverside along our train as well. There's your screenshot. There's a nice screenshot right there if I can get a good angle on this. And no trees. And no trees. Thank you. There's a good screenshot right there. Good screenshot. All right. We got a thumbnail. Let's go. So we're going to go down to 45 as we uh, go to Card Ross. Card Ross. Or Card Ross. Or Car de Ross. However you want to say it. I don't care. <laughs> that last one is uh, trying to say it wrong on purpose. Huh. I can put some throttle back on. We are under 45 at this time. I haven't really gained much power, but we'll take it. wondering I did see a whistle board there we don't see many of them on this route and I'm sure I missed one or two already poking around in the uh, computer screen for example Cardross I didn't see a whistle board for that but I thought I'd blow it anyway Trying to get some power back. We can go 60 again. But the thing is, we're going to be stopping in three miles anyway, so it doesn't matter. We're not going to get to 60. If we were going to get to 60, we had our chance back there. Oh, maybe we'll get to 60. It might happen. Yeah, we can get to 60. We can do it. We can do this. Come on, let's go 60. Let's get it. No slacking now. Get to 60. I did not want to keep it on 100% throttle. I wasn't paying attention to the whistle board. So close. There it is. We got to 60. We have a 40 coming up we need to slow down for. So we're going to get ready to do that. Immediately. I'll take the lurch. I didn't get a lurch. We have a single yellow aspect. That means we have to really slam the brakes. Okay, brake time. Brake time. Probably a train coming out of Helensburg Central that we have to wait for. That's what I think is happening up here. 
again, didn't even think about a whistleblower, but I didn't see one anyway. Interesting, I'm... Pardon, let's try that again. Interestingly, I'm not getting any train lurches at this time, and I see a light up on the track. That is a train. Okay, that was probably the cause of that yellow signal. So we probably are good now. That's the service from Craig and Doran. That's supposedly a 360, but I think it's being represented by a 320 like everything else. So that normally would be a class 360 if we were playing uh, a scenario on, I don't know, ATS. <laughs> probably have a whole bunch of reskins from ATS as well if you think about it. I don't know what is with the scenery uh, texturing on it. This is really strange scenery texturing in the water. Like, the scenery is nice, but it looks like it kind of needs a little help. We have a green. But we are going to be stopping within a mile, so I'm not really going to try to apply line speed power. There's no reason to. Uh, we literally are coming to a stop up here. So I'm only leaving enough throttle to make sure we stay above 20 until we need to stop. Three quarters of a mile is our stop. It should be on the HUD in just a moment up there. I think we're about a tenth of a mile out from that at most. There is the uh, orange marker. That's probably where it is. Now there is another signal beyond that, I believe, but it is the last signal we actually would see on the route. As once you get to the West Highland Line South, you're under the um, under the um, what should we call it? The radio token block. Now the West Coast Main Line South route that we have in Train Sim Classic does not feature that. However, there is a merged version of this route that does include uh, the line all the way to Malague and does operate on radio token block the whole way. So you do have that all the way up there. However, we don't have trains that operate as radio token blocks, so typically we would treat them as stop and go signals. I think if it's flashing, that's a stop signal. If it's steady, it's a go signal. It could be the other way around. I'm not 100% sure. That's just my memory of it. So do we take a junction here? I think we would have to if we're going to the West Highland Line. So we should be getting junctioned off here. We're not. Okay, interesting. We're not junctioning off. Maybe at the next one. We're going to stop here on the orange. We don't need to go all the way to the uh, signal. We, in fact, we would fail if we go all the way to the signal. So we're just going to stop here in the orange. This will do nicely. This is our stop point right here. I might be slightly past, but that's fine. Let's look at the train as we finish. So I'm going to play another Class 66 scenario, not uh, tomorrow, but we're going to go ahead and do another Class 66 scenario next week. I have an Armstrong Powerhouse scenario uh, set up. I'm not going to spoil which one, but I'm going to be uh, taking a drive in that uh, next week. And uh, I might have a third one. I have to take a look to see if that third one is possible, but uh, I don't know if it is yet. In any case, now make sure your last wagon is clear of the points for the siding, then reverse your train to stop in Craig and Doran siding two. Oh, we're doing that. Okay, we are actually doing that. Okay, I thought we were done, so I am mistaken. Uh, we actually have more to do. I thought we were done. Am I clear of the siding? Let's go ahead and uh, do that. I can't, okay, I have gone as far as I need to. So the message just came at a point where we didn't really need to. Did I just, what did I just do? <laughs> Oh, I see what's going on. I, F1 actually does something here. That is interesting. I did not know that. I did that by accident. But I can reverse. I will reverse. And since I've been told I have to do that, so be it. So we're going to start moving this train backwards. 
That's forwards. No, I want to go backwards. I thought I said go backwards. Let's get in the cab. Yeah, I am in reverse. What's going on here? Backwards. I'm not going to tell you again. Backwards. Thank you. All right. This is a bit of a dilapidated sighting, isn't it? We should be able to fit fully, fully in the siding. So I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, throttle off. I'm going to just go ahead because we have a 15 limit anyway. We're going to treat the uh, area as a 10. We're going to back it all the way up to the buffer. If we can. Like I said, notice how dilapidated this area is. Like the grass, like you can see all the grass and crap all over the track here. So I don't know if this is supposed to represent an area or a time period before this all happened. Uh, but um, yeah, they need to do some weeding here. They need to do some weeding. Where's the buffer here? That's the next question. Where are we going to find the buffer? I see the buffer. I definitely see the buffer. How's the front of our train? Oh, well, we're off the line. We can, well, we have to go a little further. We're still on the point, so we have to go a little further. So we're gonna continue all the way to the buffer, at least as close as I can safely. I think we're good now. But let's just show how far this goes. Oh, stop, stop, stop. That's good enough. Okay, since it took the, since it registered the stop, we're going to take it. So that is definitely the end of the scenario now. I am pretty sure now that we are done this scenario. I uh, forgot that we had an extra stop there to do to uh, make, so I didn't uh, plan for that. In any case, 66074 is signing off duty here as we uh, wait. And yeah, you've successfully completed the scenario. Well done. So that's it. Uh, let's see how much uh, erratic movement our train registered here. I'm just curious. There's no score, but let's see how much erratic movement we registered. I'll go to the uh, information screen. See you there. Okay, so it's telling me the passenger freight comfort level was exceeded 0.007% of the time. That's acceptable. We'll take that. It's not like we're transporting a dynamite or anything, but uh, yeah, so uh, that's what a result screen shows up as in standard in case you haven't seen this very much. I think most people have, because that's what most people like to play. Uh, we only went 23 miles today, so uh, we didn't cover the last section of the route to either station. Uh, and it was a short route originally as it was uh, released without the Airdrie section. It was a short route. I think even with Airdrie, it's like 33, 34, 35 miles, and that's it. So um, I know Rivet did take a bit of a beating from uh, fans on that as well, especially because this route used to be free on the workshop. So Rivet did take quite a beating from fans, but sometimes that's what happens. A really good product gets some extra stuff done to it, gets some stock with it, gets some scenarios included with it, and it gets turned into a full package that people can enjoy like any other route. And you can't fault uh, any scenario or any route designer for doing that. Uh, in any case, we're done here for today. We're gonna be doing another Class 66 scenario next week. I may do something else this weekend, not sure what yet. Um, I'm kind of leaning towards possibly trying to bring up West Coast Mainline North. I have a lot of stuff I have to fix for that because the scenarios are broken as all else. But um, I'm considering whether to do some West Coast Mainline North. I really am. Um, because I, these are some more scenarios that I have played already because I taped them in the past. And I didn't like the quality of them, so I didn't uh, release them. And I really want to go ahead and get them out. So I might do that. 
Uh, I'll surprise you if I decide to do that. Um, I'm not 100% convinced I'm going to do that yet, but I am leaning towards possibly trying that in some fashion. I know the scenarios are not numbered, so I can do them whatever order I want to, so I can play as I wish. Um, and introduce various trains. I know the class 86, for example, is in there. So I am going to think about that. I'm not going to do the 86 this weekend anyway, even if I do that route. But I am going to look at possibly considering that route as a potential journey. Because one of the AP scenarios I'm looking at is on that route. Uh, and that is another 66 scenario that I am looking at. It's not the one I'm doing next week. But I'm, if I do with another scenario, it is going to be that third one. Uh, that will be the third one. It's a really long one. And I'm kind of leaning towards running that as a two-part stero for you guys maybe even just one part if i feel like doing it as one part so i'll see what i uh, feel like doing uh, no guarantee that's going to happen yet i may do west coast mainline north without that stero in mind because i do have to introduce that route i really do uh but i still have a whole bunch of other stuff to do as well there's just so much to do guys i have 200 plus routes installed there's just so much to do uh we'll get to it all eventually in the meantime stay with me for more this weekend and uh, whether it's West Coast, Mainline North, or something else, I'll see you for that. I'm Cycle. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel. Have a wonderful day, evening, night, whatever it is for your part of the world. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.